Hello and welcome to Bronex Reviews. Today I'm going to be doing a mailbag video but also talking about the new Terminator trailer for uh, Terminator Dark Fate. Now this trailer dropped a few days ago. I'm a bit late doing a report back on this one but uh, I just wanted to have a bit of time just to kind of see what I think about it and also maybe just see what other people are saying and maybe use that as an idea to kind of discuss what else is being said and what I think of what else is being said about this. Um, I did do a mailbag video on this last year, not the trailer, but just the uh, photograph, which I'm going to show in a second, that was released last summer, because uh, there was a bit of backlash on that as well, and again, I've got some input on that, but anyway, let's get to the question here, because this was sent in by Paul Cage, and um, let's just go through that. Okay, so the question from Paul Cage. So the new Terminator trailer has dropped. What are your thoughts overall on how the film looks? Also, how does this fit into the franchise as a whole? How is Sarah Connor back when we know she died? Do you have confidence in James Cameron to do a good job? So a few questions there. Obviously we did a mailbag video for Paul last year when this photograph uh, here appeared. I think it was last summer. Um, there was a bit of backlash about that, but I'll get into that later in the video anyway. So yeah, when this trailer dropped, um, I think initially before I got to see the trailer, I'd seen a couple of people saying, yeah, this doesn't look great, to be honest. Uh, nothing more specific than that. So I kind of went into this, knowing what I know about what they've been doing with um, a lot of these beloved franchises recently. There's all sorts of different uh, disastrous angles that have just been taken with these things, not least the... Um, I say femme-centric, I have zero problem with um, changing what was an all-male cast and turning it into a female cast at face value. Um, I kind of like that franchises like the Marvel Cinematic Universe kind of try to mix things up. So not just obviously from a, from a gender point of view, but you'll have one that is very um, black in terms of Black Panther. So you've got this African kind of vibe to it going on where the majority of the cast is black because we haven't done that before. Not that it's owed to black people, but it's just a different genre. So not every film is the same as the last. Equally, Spider-Man Far From Home, they went for a kind of Ferris Bueller's Day Off kind of vibe to it because we haven't had like a, a teen rom-com in, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's not everyone's taste, but it was done tastefully done, in my opinion, anyway. So it's different, exploring different genres and mixing things up so we're not just seeing the same thing or just having the same vibe to it. And I was optimistic about Ghostbusters for that reason in 2016, um, before the trailers dropped, that is, uh, when it was just said it was going to be an all-female cast and obviously when the specifics of who was cast in it, um, I didn't have a problem with it. I was looking forward to it. If you go back on this channel, uh, I think particularly on, on the Instagram page for Brandix Reviews, I was massively hyped for this film until the trailer dropped and it was just a shit film. But the problem with it is also the identity politics that they threw in. And I think that is part of the problem with um, what people are anticipating for this new Terminator trailer. Uh, I kind of had a bit of a ramble there, but for that, just for that context alone, people are just seeing that this film's coming out and it's pretty much going to be predominantly an all-female um, cast in terms of who the heroes are and who's basically fighting the bad guys. Um, people are just seeing that. As soon as they announce it, everyone's kind of thinking, here we go again. And I myself was thinking that. And having seen this trailer, I'm still thinking that. I'm, I'm even more so thinking that. Now, don't get me wrong, this trailer isn't... That's not my main focal point of the trailer. I just kind of wanted to throw that out there because I know that some people are, are going in that direction. Um, I just saw women beating up men and then more of women beating up men. And when they finished doing that, it was just more of women beating up men. Um, so, yeah, if you're trying to make a statement with this, we know it's been done before. If it hadn't been done before, I don't think I'd be thinking that. But in the context of the current climate with the kind of propaganda that we're seeing... Um, thrown into movies and TV shows like the Batwoman was just god awful it was just completely uh, I don't need no man kind of thing but just really really ramped up I mean there's that I don't need no man and then there's some next level shit Batwoman TV uh, series trailer was the next level so I didn't get so much of that from the Terminator trailer thankfully um, but, but it was there and you couldn't not see it basically 
So uh, on that level, I'm really not uh, looking forward to seeing this film or even planning on going to see this film, if that's what they're going to do. Now, this is just a trailer. The actual film might not reflect that in the slightest. It might just be the way that this trailer has been put together. We've seen plenty of trailers in the past that have kind of missold the movie. Um, Dark Knight Rises, for example, a lot of people complained about that trailer because it made it look like an action-packed movie when, it, when really all we got was pretty much a kind of a disaster movie. You didn't necessarily get that from watching the trailer. It seemed a bit more um, action orientated. There's plenty of other examples where trailers have kind of missold a film. Um, so it might be that that's the case here. But uh, the other aspect of this as well is the terrible CGI in this in this movie. It's like early 2000s level uh, bad and it can't be ignored as well. Um, I think a lot of the look of this does also seem to be a lot like they're borrowing from what they did in Terminator Genesis. I don't know if that's a, a good idea really because that film didn't get very well um, reviewed. I personally thought it was the weakest entry so far in the Terminator franchise, but I think that this one might, um, well, does have a good chance of, <laughs> of actually going one step beyond that. So uh, we'll see how that goes anyway, but the CGI in this doesn't look great. But again, it's just a trailer. It might not be the finished product when the film comes out. Um, now the cast in this, like I was saying before, the, the female thing aside, I was, I don't care. I mean, Sarah Connor pretty much made those first two films alongside Arnie. So to bring her back, but also just in general to say that there's no precedent in this franchise for obviously strong females being women and doing what women do great. Because uh, obviously from the empathy point of view, her being Sarah Connor, her being a woman was integral to her journey. It wasn't something that a man could do. It couldn't be done from a male point of view, her journey. Uh, so to bring her back, I think it could work. But again, if it's just going to be, well, I'm this super tough chick because chicks are hotter than dudes uh, and also tougher than dudes and, that, and that's cool and that just rocks. That's shit. I'm sorry. That really is. That's not. That, that's not what the original um, female empowerment message of those first two films was. It wasn't what Sarah Connor herself was about. I think. Uh, I mean, I haven't watched the Sarah Connor Chronicles TV show, but from what I understand about it, um, that seems to have done it better than what this movie is going to be doing. But again, we'll see. It's just a trailer. We don't know what the end product is just yet. So there's always that room for a bit of uh, optimism there. Um, what else? So you were asking about James Cameron. Uh, do you think he'll do a good job? That was I've realised that's something that you asked of me. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think, to be honest, he's more of a producer in this. He it can't be forgotten that he did massively um, promote in interviews Terminator Genesis when that came back out, when that came out back in 2015. And it's pretty much been said since uh, to him, did you really mean what you said back then? Because the film wasn't great and you were saying that it was a true successor to T2. And from what I understand, the, the, the gist of it is, well, he was just promoting Arnie's film because he's good friends with Arnie and he wanted to see the film do well, so he put his stamp of approval on it even though the film wasn't great. So um, I don't really know what James Cameron's influence could, um, could imply in this one, whether or not... Um, he's got some good ideas and it's going to be put into the film. I think he had some good ideas uh, that were put into Terminator Genesis from what I understand. The, the concept of um, how the Terminator, the Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator had aged. I seem to remember that was a concept he'd come up with that they went in with, with Terminator Genesis. I don't know if there's going to be any similar examples in this of James Cameron's ideas kind of being put into the film in the end product. But we'll see anyway. He is a good filmmaker, you can't deny that. Uh, I know he's busy with the Avatar sequels, all 20 of them. At the moment, so I really don't know how much input he's going to have had in this film other than just kind of signing his name off on it. So uh, we'll see how that works. Um, the actual trailer itself, like I say, um, really did not sell me on this. It just had a vibe of a TV show, basically, with a big budget. Maybe a sort of six-part TV sh show um, of, I don't know, Sarah Connor Chronicles, just happens to have Linda Hamilton and uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger in there. It, if you had told me that's what this was, I would have absolutely believed it. I wouldn't have thought, wow, for a TV show, that looks amazing. I would have thought, no, looks like a TV show, pretty much. So uh, that's that's another, another kind of thing there against it. Now, having Arnie in this, he's barely in the trail, which makes me think how much of the film is he actually going to be in. Um... 
I really don't know on that because, like I say, um, from what I understand, he's been quite heavily promoting the film. But again, that doesn't necessarily mean he's in the film for more than five minutes. Um, so we'll see about that. So the actual franchise really, to me, just seems like it's dead. Um, we'll see when the film comes out. It could change. It's kind of on its last legs. Uh, if if not dead already, I mean, you could say that uh, Terminator Genesis was pretty much confirmation of that. Terminator Salvation, which came out 10 years ago, I kind of look at that as a standalone film. It doesn't have Arnie in it other than the CGI one. I'm a big Christian Bale fan, and from that point of view, I kind of got something out of the film. Um, it's, not, it's not his best uh, film, but uh, I kind of liked seeing him in this. It was an interesting way to go, and I think it was a product of its time 10 years ago as well. And they did some interesting things with it. It just it wasn't brilliantly executed, but I kind of discount Terminator Salvation um, just because it doesn't have Arnie in it really. But it's very difficult because obviously, I'm, I've been saving this part for the end of the video. You you're asking how is Sarah Connor still alive? Well, how does this fit in with the franchise? Because if you've seen Terminator Three you realise she died of leukaemia or something around about the mid-90s. I think it was implied, I don't know if there was an actual date that was shown in that, but it was kind of implied that she was battling cancer until after Judgment Day passed, which was August 29th, 1997. Um, so she died sometime shortly after that. Um, from what I understand, this film heavily retcons anything after Terminator 2. This is basically Terminator 3 version 2. Um, similar to what they did with Superman Returns in 2006 when they basically said this is Superman 3 version 2. So ignore 3 and 4, they weren't made. This is the true successor to Superman 2. Just like this film, this Terminator film, is a true successor to Terminator 2. But look what a disaster Superman Returns was. I actually pretty much ignore that one and I would rather watch the Richard Pryor Superman 3 than Superman Returns, its replacement. Uh, and I kind of get the impression that that's what you're going to have here. Because the actual Terminator 3 film isn't that bad. It's just not that great. It doesn't live up w anywhere near the, the standard of the first two films. Um, but it was a fair attempt. Uh, it was a product of its time, early 2000s. It had a lot of the kind of problems that films that came out around about that time had. Uh, but it had Arnie in it, he was putting a lot of effort in, and uh, it was quite memorable. It had some pretty good action and some pretty good effects in there as well. So I suspect that what T3 has going for it will elevate it above anything that Terminator Dark Fate is going to give us, I suspect. I don't know that, I could be wrong, but who, you know, who, who's to say at this point? Because all we've had is this trailer, and trailers can miss sell movies, either for the better or for the worse. So uh, that's pretty much my thoughts on that. So in terms of the actual franchise, how this film is going to fit in, uh, in context of your question, well, if they've retconned everything from, from T3, including T3 onwards, um, that's how Sarah Connor's still alive. So it's very confusing. It, just, it does seem very confusing at this point how it all fits together, but we will see anyway. The film comes out uh, in a few months' time, from what I understand. I don't think I'll be going to see it. On the strength of this trailer, I'm pretty much... I'm not boycotting the film myself, but I'm just not interested. I'm, I'm sick of being disappointed by sequels that have been shat out by Hollywood or whoever um, and just really just crapping all over uh, our childhood memories uh, by bringing back characters. It's like if they want to do a sequel with none of the same characters and it's terrible, you can kind of ignore that. But when they're bringing back Bruce Willis as John McClane for Die Hard 5 and it's just god awful and he himself is god awful in the film, um, I don't like that. Uh, I mean, you can always ignore a sequel. It's totally cool. I get that. I do that. But I don't want to be tricked into going to see it because of some promise of some great character from your childhood has returned up to the big screen. Uh, I think a lot of people are more savvy than that. And uh, I personally, like I say, off the strength of this trailer, have no intention of going to see this movie. Things could change between now and then, who knows. So let's hope that the new Rambo film, Rambo Last Blood, which is coming out uh, later in the year, is not going to let us down. So if Terminator uh, Dark, not Dark Phoenix, that's X-Men, Terminator Dark Fate is bad, as it looks, We've always got Rambo, the, Ram the return of Rambo to kind of fall back on and we haven't seen him since what, 2006, 
seven, I think. So uh, that would be a, a good one. And I don't think Stallone's going to let us down with that one. So I'll probably do a trailer review for Terminator. Not Terminator. Uh, Rambo uh, Last Blood. Can't even get the name right. Rambo Last Blood, when that comes out uh, at some point in the near future, I'm hoping. So if you want updates on, on that franchise... Follow Brand X Reviews on YouTube, Instagram, and or Facebook. Um, I will see how the Terminator franchise kind of moves on from here, but I think it's pretty much dead. A lot like the Alien franchise as well. So uh, we'll pretty much leave it there. I hope I haven't been too negative on this one, but I'm just being honest. I'm just being realistic. Uh, there are some serious problems when it comes to continuing beloved franchises at the moment. We've seen it with Star Trek. We've seen it with Star Wars. Um, a lot of these things we've seen with Alien and Predator. A lot of these key franchises, they just can't leave them alone. We've always got Beverly Hills Cop. That was a trilogy. It was left at three. They didn't kind of follow it after that. They didn't ruin it. Same with Lethal Weapon as well. Um, and so uh, there are still some good ones out there that haven't been absolutely arse raped. So on the subject of arse rape, I'm going to leave this video there and say thank you very much for watching. Choo-choo-fuh!